He's <laughs> okay. Here we are. Here we go. May 24th, 2016, Chiropractic United podcast, Tuesday night. And we are here with my good friend, Dr. Joe Farantelli, of all his Posture Co. stuff, Dr. Fred DiDomenico, Elite Coaching. And we are fired up tonight because we have someone that we've never interviewed before. And let's talk about what's really important. She's Italian. Thank you very much. <laughs> Italian background. Let's talk about what really matters. I hear she's a phenomenal cook. And above that, great philosophy, Dr. Kathleen Wendland Kobe. So much to have you. So great to have you here. I've seen you speak all over the profession. I always get fired up listening. You are principal, principal, principal to a thousand degree. And not about you. So great to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Great to be with you guys. Yeah, and finding out, you know, we chatted, uh, you know, I've seen you around and we happen to uh, kind of cross paths more directly at Cal Jam, which is an awesome experience. Everybody yep. needs to go. Chatted with you, found out that you and Joe go way back. Yeah, to what, 19, 1995, I think, right? Is that when we started school? Yeah, the yeah. centennial. Yep, we were in class together, literally in class together, same class. Right. Nice. Oh, and yeah. not like the students do nowadays, where if you ask them what quarter in, they're like, oh, fifth, seventh, and eighth. We yeah. stayed one quarter the whole way through, started to get the graduate. Yeah. yeah, we pretty much, it, back then, I mean, we rarely had people that were mixed quarters at all. It was every, and we had a huge class back then, too, that started out. I mean, it was, gosh, we had like, what, 400 people that started at, at one time. And not it, that many graduated, but. Yeah, not, yeah, right. But it was one of the first classes that was, pretty much half men, half women. So that was yep. a big deal back then. That was kind of like a record-breaking thing. Nice. Yep. Well, hey, we want uh, people to know the woman behind the, the mission and the purpose. So how'd you get into chiropractic? Where did all this start? So I got to tell you something. I'm in my parents' house right now up in New York, and, uh, and I'm, in my, I'm in my parents' office. And I grew up in a family of, my dad owned a bunch of construction companies, my dad's a firefighter, but my mom was a nurse. So I was always getting taken to the, the medical doctor. And then it got to a certain point where if, if we needed something, we didn't even go to the medical doctor. My mom just called in a prescription. So like as a kid, I was so heavily medicated on every kind of antibiotic there was. And I didn't know anything about chiropractic, but like most people, I got into a car accident and that's how I went to a chiropractor. Uh, unfortunately, the guy that I went to was just an ambulance chaser. Like, he never, ever educated me about chiropractic. So I knew nothing about chiropractic when I went through his office or even when I was done. But I had a friend who wanted to be a chiropractor, and it just it kind of sounded pretty interesting because I'm, as most people know, I'm very into fitness. I live a fitness lifestyle, and I was uh, real big in the fitness career, like in the fitness industry. I was an aerobics instructor, personal trainer, fitness competitor. And I knew that I wanted to help a lot of people, and I knew that I wanted to help them with their health, but I didn't know how. And chiropractic, when I found out about it, just seemed to like fit the bill. You know, it was about helping people with the best thing, the most important thing they have, that's their health, and helping them in a natural way, which was really, really important to me. So how did you find out about it? Um, you know, this, the, the guy that I knew, his name was Rob and I, and I owe a debt of gratitude for him. And I, and I do talk to him every now and then, uh, he, he's in the military. He wanted to be a chiropractor. He talked to me about life and we went down to Georgia and I never actually checked out the school. And then a year later I went down to Georgia. I was checking out a few schools, walked onto the campus of life and said, I'm going to this school just like that. Like literally walked the gym, walk the uh, dissection hallway and, <laughs> That was it. I was I was just gung ho. This is where I'm going. Burn the burn the bridges. Don't look back. I'm going. And I'm going to graduate, and this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And I got the philosophy later. I got the excitement initially, and I didn't really know what chiropractic was about. But I got the philosophy early on in school, and I, and it just, I got goosebumps right now. Right, yeah. like you know, when when you knew that you got it, like I got it, and I just stayed the course. So when you got it, what was that like? Because there's, you know, there's people that get it and there's chiropractors that don't know what that feels like. So what was that like for a, tra- a realization or awareness or transformation for you? I remember sitting in orientation, you know, when you're, when you're a brand new student at, at most of the colleges and especially at Life College at the time, 
you had to go and sit in orientation and for three hours you listened to Dr. Sin. I bet you yeah. don't remember that. Yeah. Right? I mean, it was like the longest thing. Your butt was hurting and he was talking. And the first few minutes you're like, is this guy serious? And then after a while you're like, he's got a point there. And then he just keeps going and he just keeps going and he just keeps going. And he starts hammering the philosophy into you. And you haven't even started school yet, right? Yeah. Like orientation. <laughs> you had a three-hour orientation? <laughs> you had a yeah. three-hour orientation. And somewhere in there, I, I still to this day remember him saying, I want you to look around this room and I want you to find somebody in this room to marry because once you're a chiropractor, you live in this world. Yeah. You're going to raise your family in this world. And you looked at Joe and said, no, not him. Not so much. <laughs> not him, not him. <laughs> now, the crazy part is I had, this, <laughs> I, I had this crazy guy sitting next to me and um, he, like I had just met him when I moved down there to go to school and he was, he was always like right by my side, you know, we were dating, but I thought he was, he was a little bit crazy. He was really attached and he had already gone through orientation and he sat through it with me again. Now it's a three hour orientation. Nobody goes through that twice, but he sat through it because he was waiting for that moment when Dr. Sid said, look around this room and find somebody to marry. And he <laughs> me like, he's talking about us. You're going to marry me. Right. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm here to go to school. I'm here to get my doctorate, not to get a doctor. Right, you know, like as a woman, it's it's a big deal. I wanted my own doctorate. I didn't want to marry somebody. So, uh, lo and behold, here I am, married to him, and it's 21 years later. Right? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Now there's a man with vision. <laughs> oh my God, there was that was a man with vision. Yeah, he, he had the vision. Yep. And probably a lot of charm too. And he's pretty cute. I have to admit, I've seen him. <laughs> he's, kind of he's kind of cute he's all into cycling now he's like this long distance mountain biker he's doing this crazy Leadville race so he's training really hard for that but but we're incorporating chiropractic into it so much that like we're educating people about chiropractic as he's training so it's it's really cool to see him fired up about something cool so there you are in school and uh, obviously I don't know if there's any uh, stories you want to go through that might be funny during that time but then you came out and you're just lit up with passion and uh so what was that like you know i had i had developed such a respect and a reverence and an admiration for dr sid and i know some people that went through school at that time were like oh god we gotta go sit in assembly and listen to dr right. sid again. and i kind of looked at it like man i get to listen to the bj of our times you know like i knew that every speech that i was listening to was legendary and would go down in history and of course they were recorded but nobody has access to them um, but I knew that it was something really important to listen to him. And I just, I just let it all soak in. And when I graduated, I just, I was on fire. I wanted to go light up the world. And, you know, we, we graduated on a Friday, took my last final on Friday. I was in practice on Monday. By Wednesday, I was, I was in Florida doing the internship. But on Wednesday, I saw 186 patients. Okay. I'm, I'm like, not even a week out of school. Now, granted, it was an existing office. But think about this. As a student, you don't see 186 patients in a month, right? Right. In one day, when you're three days out of school, I went home that night and cried because my PISA forms were killing me. They hurt so bad that I didn't yeah. even want to go in the office on Thursday. And like on Thursday, every patient I go to adjust, I'm like, oh, oh my God, my hands hurt so bad. But you know what? Suck it up, buttercup. And it was just like, figure out how to do it. Rock and roll. People need it. I have to deliver it. And, and I never looked back. It was just fast and furious, and, and you got to learn how to do it on the fly. So that was, uh, was that a DE practice way back when? Was that somebody you met at DE, or, or who was that? No, it was with Mike Shreve, who was actually a Palmer guy. He always bust my chops about, like, university, and I'd bust his chops about Palmer because I'm like, Palmer, isn't that the school that's doing, like, rehab and everything else? I thought the principal is at, like, university. You know, it may have started at Palmer, but it lives at life. So we would bust each other's chops all the time. And he's, he's a great, great guy. He actually teaches down at one of the Florida schools. But he just, he literally said to me the first day I went in there, he said, what don't you know? And what do you need to know? And anything I said I don't know how to do became my sole job in the office. Like I didn't know how to take x-rays because you didn't do it in school. I took 30 sets of films a day. Like it was a high volume practice. You know, I was, uh, I was a good adjuster, but I wanted to be a phenomenal adjuster. So, boom, just like that. I mean, I was seeing high volume right away because he'd say, okay, go see a patient yeah. today. Get it. Nice. 
So there yeah. you are in this practice. You're rocking and rolling. Then what? Uh, then I, I started traveling back home. I'm a New Yorker. I'm a diehard New Yorker. And, you know, like I, I wanted to be back home. So I was flying back and forth every week. And finally I decided to just come back here and open a practice up on the North Shore of Long Island. So I opened a practice. Uh, my dad built it out. And we just like up and running and, and just marketed like crazy and really did a lot of word of mouth stuff. I was always a big public speaker. It's what I did before I came into chiropractic through the fitness industry. So it just made sense to me to get out there and start telling the story. And, and I did. I went to gyms and I went to um, any kind of fitness-related environment and business, like the, the shape places and the, the nutrition places and GNC. And, and I went to all the banks in my community. And then I started going to big businesses and I started getting uh, corporate talks to Companies like Cablevision. I mean, Cablevision is one of the biggest cable companies in the world. It's the first cable company. And I was doing talks to their employees on a regular basis. So, you know, the, the more you do, the more you can do kind of mentality. I didn't know that I couldn't do it. I didn't know that it hadn't been done. So I just kept doing talk after talk after talk. And uh, because of the talks that we were doing, I was getting patients calling from Texas saying, oh, I understand that you're the expert and I need to come see you. I mean, <laughs> I was like a 27, 28 year old kid, right? Like I, like I was some expert, right? But it was, a, it was really a fun time because I had no attachments, no other commitments other than chiropractic and fitness, and I was all. What happened to your husband? You didn't marry him yet? No, I hadn't <laughs> married him yet. I was flying solo. He was in Georgia. I was in New York. I was, I was living single, living the good life. You know, doing the young good looking doctor having a great time making a lot of money changing lives speaking everywhere i was living the the lifestyle and then uh, and then we got back together and i started flying back and forth we opened the practice in atlanta and i started commuting back and forth between the two offices which is you know, people talk about a commute let me tell you yeah. something i get on a plane to commute every thursday and every monday it was crazy Nice. So, you know, you say things so casually, you know, like, well, I just started giving talks, you know, and I gave a talk here and I gave a talk there and I gave a talk there. And, you know, there's so many people that um, what I would like you to share is what that passion that you feel inside that drives you to know, like you, like you didn't know that you couldn't do it. You know what I mean? And so you go out and give talks because there's people that struggle. And when you talk and you know this, when you talk to people that are struggling, then you say, what are you doing? Nothing. You know what I mean? There's a reason you're struggling. Cause they I'm not going to do that. It doesn't work. Yeah. Well, is what you're doing working? Come on. Well, no, I get Yeah, there's a New York coming out of you. I love that, by the way. And But, you know, like, like what did you feel? That it's a, is it a responsibility? I mean, you have this message in you. What did it, what did it feel like so people can understand you know, that level of passion and purpose. It kind of goes, it goes back to my upbringing. I come from a family that every single person in my family is a firefighter. My mother, my father, my sister, my brother, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, every single person in my family is a firefighter. And in Long Island, you're a volunteer firefighter. So you have your normal job, but then like if, if your radio goes off, you drop everything and you go. And then a bunch of my family members are also on the job in the city. Like my brother's up in the Bronx and my cousin's in, in uh, bed stuck. So, so this is, this is a way of life for us. Like it's service, you know, it's, it's work hard, serve hard, play hard, have a good life, but, but really commit yourself to making sure that you're improving the greater good. And I come from a family that always taught me, you can have anything you want. You can do anything you want. You can be anything you want, as long as you're willing to do what it takes. And so that was always the question in my house. Are you willing to do what it takes? Are you willing to do what it takes? Right? So it, it was such a mindset of, you know, you serve people because the more people you serve, the better life. You can, you can serve the masses and eat with the classes. The more you do, the more you're able to do. So I kind of got on this, this journey of speaking as an aerobics instructor. And I was 17 years old, still in high school, teaching aerobics at Jackal Lane, which became Valley's, which is now LA Fitness. But, but at Jackal Lane, I mean, you had to be 21 to even be in the gym. And here I am, 17 years old, still in high school. But I'm on a stage 20 hours a week in front of people speaking on microphone you want to talk about getting comfortable fast that's how you do the 10,000 rule so I got comfortable fast and uh and maybe a couple of years into it I, I can't tell you how many years into it I went away on a vacation and I was like 
you know what, when I go back, I'm getting a raise or I'm quitting. I'm just, I'm determined that, you know, even though I'm young, you know, you can't take me for granted because I know my stuff. And, and at this point, I'm, I'm teaching corporate level fitness and I'm, I'm training all the new instructors. And I walk into the gym seven or seven o'clock or so on a Friday night in the summertime. Now in New York, like that's prime time. Nobody's in a gym. Everybody's yep. out clubs, right? Seven o'clock ish summertime. There's 80 something people waiting to take my class. And I walk in the room and they all stand up and they're clapping. And I'm like, like what's going like, seriously, what's going on? I had taken two weeks off and they're like, don't ever do that again. We can't live without you. You know, like you have such an impact on our life. I got to tell you something right then and there, it hit me that what I was doing was sharing my knowledge and changing people's lives. And if that doesn't change your life right there, then you need a new career. Because right then and there, I knew that I was going to spend the rest of my life helping people live a healthier lifestyle. And, and it did it for So what, it didn't, there were no more barriers. It was just like, this is what I need to do. And every opportunity that I get in my life, if it helps me help more people live a healthier lifestyle, then I got to take it. And if there's no opportunity, I got to make one. Well, certainly, I mean, those are invaluable experiences. Sorry, Joe, I'm doing all the talking. Oh, no, no. It's, this is usually how this goes. Yeah, this is good for me to remember all of this, too. This, cause she, was doing, she was on fire the whole time during school doing this and, and teaching. I remember you teaching all the fitness classes and running off. Instead of studying, you had to say, I had to come back to the library because you had to go teach a class and all that type of stuff. Yep. Well, and it's still even something bigger, Kathy. I mean, yeah, you had that experience. Yeah, you were young. Yeah, you were willing to do what it takes. But it's also a message, like what you said, to change people's lives. Then you get the chiropractic principle, and then you realize this is a message for humanity. You know, I mean, what was that like when you, I mean, was that, did that feel different than the aerobics thing? Or, or how did you perceive that? You know, the aerobics thing, it was like I would have people that are morbidly obese, and, and over time, they had lost 100, 200 pounds, and, and that felt like, wow, I did a really good thing. You know, I really helped somebody achieve their goals, but it, it almost became like an addiction, like I want to help more people on a bigger scale. That's how I went to school, and then when I, when I got out of school, it was like, okay, I can't stop with my community because there's people around the world that don't know this information. I can't stop with just my town and the people that could come into my office. I need to get involved in the state and I need to get involved in the profession. And, and it just drove me to do more and more and more and want to help more people because, you know, you, you touched on it. It's a responsibility. Once you know this information, what I always say is my education is useless if I don't share it. When you know this information, there's an obligation to share it because there's a sick and suffering world out there that doesn't know that chiropractic exists. They just don't know. Nobody's ever brought chiropractic to them. They've been on the medical merry round so long that they don't even know there's another option. They just keep going around and around and around and getting sicker and more drugs and more symptoms and sicker and more drugs and more symptoms. And, and we have the ability to stop it, but we got to open our mouths. And so many of us are just afraid to open our mouths. And I don't know why, because like you said before, if they're already struggling, then do something different. You know, if you're struggling in practice, you're struggling because you're not getting out there and you're not changing lives. You're struggling in practice because you're thinking about yourself and you're thinking this is about you. And it ain't about you. It's about the people out there that need what we have. And they're never going to get it if we don't start opening our mouths and sharing the message. They're never going to get it if we don't educate our staff, our existing patients, our community, and the world. It's up to us. Nobody else is going to do it. That's right. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm amazed you're still sitting in your chair there. I am. Yeah. I'm holding on to the chair, but anyway. <laughs> we need some music. So, okay, so now, now you're in your practice in Long Island. You're going back and forth. You got your little love affair, two different practices. So go on. So, so now what? I mean, you've expanded way into all the things that you've created. Oh, God. You know, there's not a story that I don't have that isn't crazy, right? Because I never take no for an answer and I go for it all. So here I am, I'm practicing. I got a New York office that I'm in Monday afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning. And I got an Atlanta office that I'm in Thursday afternoon, Friday, Saturday, Monday morning. So you can imagine like I'm racing to the airport. I'm jumping on the plane. I fly. I get off the plane. I race to my office. No problem. And I'm doing this for a long time. And then 9-11 happens. 
And the morning of 9-11, I actually missed my flight to get back to the office. It was a week after Labor Day. So, you know what? I've just hired two associates. I'll take an extra week off, and I'll come back on Tuesday. I missed my flight that Tuesday morning, and I would have been flying in for it. So in that, in that process, and I already told you my whole family's firefighters, right? Mm -hmm. So I instantly knew who I lost. And, uh, and it was a real wake-up call. And I'm sure everybody has their story about 9-11 that it touched them, but you said this is all about me.com, so here we go. It's all about me. I, uh, I flew back on one of the first planes when the planes finally started flying, and including the, the captain, the flight attendants, and me, there were five people total on the plane. Yeah. Right? Nobody wanted to fly. And flying back and, and seeing my city, my town, where I grew up, my life decimated like that, just fueled me. And, and I remember Dr. Sid always saying, you serve your way through it. You serve your way through it. So I spent September, October, November, and December down at ground zero, just adjusting, you know, head down, serve your way through it. Because it was, it was a really, it was a really trying time for, for any New Yorker, but especially someone who was raised in a firehouse like me. So I served my way through it. And uh, come the end of December, you know, January, 2002, I said, time for me to check out. I sold my practice here to one of my associates. I headed down the, to Georgia, put my head down, started work, and didn't even know that life was going through the turmoil because we were so focused on taking care of our patients and our community and, and getting the message out. That by the time I picked my head up, Dr. Reekman was already in, the school was already saved, things were moving forward, and, and it was time for me to get involved. So, you know, sometimes you just, yeah, you just serve your way through it, right? Well, you know, that's a great one-liner, you know, you, you know, like BJ said, you never know how far reaching things you may think, say, or do affects the millions, you know, and, and those one-liners from Sid take you through that time. Like I'm sure you can picture his face hearing him say that it's such a trying time. I mean, you lost relatives in that event yeah. and uh, you know, to be able to manage your state, so to speak, emotionally, and to be able to turn that into passion is really a testimony of the strength and courage of your and faith of your spirit. So you know, it, it was a for me being the only person in my family who was never a firefighter, and, and that's because I was a girl and I was boy crazy, and you know, my, my dad didn't let me be. It was finally my turn to give back. Right. So so for me, I don't look at it. I didn't do anything that anybody else wouldn't have done given my circumstances and my situation in life. You know, I did what was the most logical thing to do. Mm -hmm. To you. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, it's good. It's, it's courage. You know, not everybody has that courage and you do. So I'm, you know, acknowledging that. So, all right. So then you create, you still have created more and more stuff. Okay. So like I said, there's, there's always a bigger story and we're just starting the snowballs just starting to get bigger now. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. So, so somewhere around, oh, I don't know, guy's been at life now 11 years. So somewhere around 2006 or so, we started getting involved at Life University. And, and we started going down and helping get new students to the school. And then we started having the peak students come to our office. And, and I ultimately wrote the training manual for the peak program for all the doctors so that, you know, if you're going to have peak students come in your office, this is how you do it. This is how you manage them so that they learn the business and they learn the art and they learn the science and the philosophy. So I, I wrote that training manual for the school and I just kept getting more and more involved, more and more involved. You know, the practice is doing great and, and the students are flourishing and we're having fun mentoring people. And then I start teaching the business classes at Life University and then I go and get pregnant. And, and you know what? It was, it's the greatest thing, but it was so life changing because it catapulted me into a whole different level of serving people, right? I can remember being 39, 40 weeks pregnant and people kept saying, well, when are you going to stop teaching aerobics? When are you going to stop adjusting patients? You know, when are you going to take a break? And my standard answer was, I'm not sick, I'm pregnant. Yeah. But the more I said that, the more I realized that nobody around me got that message. Nobody around me was raised that way. They, they, were, they all thought that pregnancy is a weakened condition of the woman. And I looked at it like it's the strongest time in a woman's life because I got two hearts, two brains, four arms, four legs, and two mouths, right? woo For a woman, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> so I thought this is the strongest time in my life. You know, I was working out and I was teaching and I was adjusting. I never, ever changed the way that I adjust patients. 
never. It, I never had to modify it. I adjusted in labor with both babies right up to the very end. Um, but in that process of people constantly asking me, you know, when are you going to take a break? When are you going to stop? I realized that it was now my duty to educate people yeah. about what a healthy pregnancy looks like. Yeah, and so it's kind know. of a residue for, for the people that know me, the people that take my classes or the patients. We went out the back deck in the middle of July, 90 something degrees out, and I recorded fitness videos, pregnant, right? 39 and a half weeks pregnant, I recorded fitness videos. We put them on YouTube and forgot all about it. And the next thing you know, I've got a million views, then two million views, then five million views, then seven million views. It just, it's, it's crazy. So that, that catapulted me into the next level, which is when we started Educated Pregnancy. And that's, that's where we really changed our lives chiropractic. So tell us about that because, you know, there's so many chiropractors that can share that and direct people towards that website and general public because it's going to be, this video is going to be blasted out quite a okay. few places, So, Well, I will tell you, Educated Pregnancy was completely set up for the public. It was, it was designed to be a funnel, a catch-all funnel to get every woman out there who wanted to have a healthy pregnancy. So if they said they want to learn about nutrition, we pulled them in. If they said they want to learn about exercise, we pulled them in. They said they want to learn how to not gain too much weight, we pulled them in. They want to learn about having a healthy pregnancy, an easier birth, what to do with colic or ear infections, or should I vaccinate my children? We were pulling them in under, you know what, we'll meet you where you are. Whatever you want to learn about, we're going to educate you. But in the process, everything we taught them was where health comes from, and why they need to value the relationship between the spine and the nervous system, not only for them, but for their unborn child. So everything, while it seemed like, you know, and somebody could say, oh, well, she talks about fitness and she talks about nutrition and she talks about ear infections. It was all designed to catch patients, people, and bring them into the understanding of what chiropractic actually is. And we have sent so many women around the world to chiropractors. It, we, we stopped counting years ago. It's, it's just been phenomenal. So we, had, we ended, up, ended up having to open up the website to the healthcare providers, to the chiropractors, because they were saying, I've got people coming to my office because of educated pregnancy. I don't even know what that is. Start educating me, start teaching me, start teaching my team. So we teach teams, we teach doctors and their teams how to have conversations about all aspects of fertility challenges, pregnancy, birth, motherhood, parenthood. And it's, it's just getting messages out community in a way that the public is receptive to it, but it educates them about what chiropractic is. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So that's where you are today. Uh, well, no, know. I'm still going. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. So and I know you have visions for the future because the snowballs, now, now it's almost an avalanche. Where's that going? Because it's going, you know, you're gaining momentum. What's your, what's your vision? So so my vision has always been, since I was 17 years old, to help as many people as possible live a healthier life. And everything I've done has always been in, in that mindset. So, you know, speaking on the various stages, I am so fortunate to be in the position that I'm in. You know, I'm, obviously I'm a woman in chiropractic, which I never really knew I was a woman in chiropractic until a couple of years ago when the League of Chiropractic Women came around. And I was like, oh, I guess it, I guess. There is something different about me being a woman in chiropractic. I never thought of it that way, but, but I realize now that there's so many women that have always felt that they were at a disadvantage because they didn't hear messages from women speakers. They didn't have women coaches. They didn't have any women who were successful to look up to. And, and I'm kind of gotten thrown into that role. And um, I, I say that I'm very, very fortunate to get to speak on the stages that I speak on because, I mean, just, sure. just in the next few months. If, which is all on it. You know what? It's it's really it's really kind of cool because I've done Cal Jam twice, Cairo Fest twice. I'm going back to Edinburgh uh, in a couple of weeks for my second time. Uh, I've been in uh, Rome and, and Egypt and Paris, and I'm going to Milan in a couple of weeks, and I'll be in Amsterdam and London. I'll be back on the Cal Jam stage, of course, and and I've got Light Vision three times a year and New Beginnings. I was just at the other day, so I really am so fortunate to be everywhere and share the message and inspire other yep. students and young docs that, that they can do it all. They can have it all too. Mm -hmm. That's you know? awesome. No. What? Go ahead. So Joe. Me, I got, I got Joe. Talking, Joe. No, no, this is great. I'm just reminiscing about just 
it, it's great to see how far you've come since we were sitting in class together. You know, I, I mean, we've had actually quite a few people in our class that went on to do some great things in chiropractic. And what's great about, you know, our class in particular is that we had a lot of students that I really didn't think got the philosophy and turned out to be some of the biggest philosophy people there was and um, went on to be some of our, our classmates have went on to have huge practices too that are doing great things. And so it's, you know, looking back at it, I can't believe how long ago it was that we were there, you know, but it seems like yesterday that we're sitting in class and going through, I remember you getting all fired up about CBP and coming in and, and talking and, and, you know, deciding what you want to talk to at, at club and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's amazing, and especially now to see what life is at now. I mean, life has come so far. I mean, going back, it's, I don't even recognize the school compared to where we were at. So he's done some wonderful things there. For sure. Well, I want to comment on that, too, because, Kathy, you're so philosophically based that you talk about the principle and you talk about the philosophy and you're a spinal corrective doctor. I just found out, found that out about it. Oh, yeah. and the application and the principle have to match. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We, we are, we've always been a CVP office and, uh, you know, we still have the Gambale to George chairs and yeah. I mean, we, that's what we do in our office. I'm, I uh, have a huge scoliosis population you know everybody thinks of me as the pregnancy person and I always say that's not my like that's that's what I'm passionate about but that's not my practice I am a family-based corrective care practice and if you come in my office on any given day there'll be there'll be a, a good percentage of scoliosis patients there's a good percentage of athletes there's a good patient a huge percentage of patients who have you know loss of curve anterior head translation like my practice, our practice is just a great fun place to be. And, and I owe a lot of it to Dr. Sid and Deed and Don and, and everything that I learned. And it's so cool for me to watch Joe go out there and do it, right? Because Joe's been doing it since day one and he's been out there and he's been pushing hard. Yeah. And, and now he's, now he's really like, he's on that snowball, right? Where the avalanche is going now and, and he's doing such a great job that it is. It's so cool to have come up, in the time when we came up through school with the people yeah. we came up with and, and to realize that now, uh, Jill LaMarche is, is a good friend of mine. And he looked at me one day and he said, you're not one of the young ones anymore, sweetheart. You're one of the youngers now, you know? And, and I always think of myself as this young kid in chiropractic, but he's like, I got a news, I got to break it to you. You're not one of the young ones anymore. You're one of the leaders. Yeah. You know, I have to take offense that I'm not one of the young ones. I was like, oh, it, you know, is my gray showing? Do I need to go to the gym? What's going on here? But he, he meant it in a good way. Like, it's your time now. Mm -hmm. The guard has changed. Yeah. The guard yeah. has changed. I know, because we look, I mean, we grew up in DE. We're probably about, I'm probably older than you are, you know, way back in the Sigafoos and Jimmy Gregg and, you know, the Ian Grossoms. And, you know, I was flying out there every three months from California. And, I mean, I graduated in 87 out of LACC. So, you know, when you look at those leaders and then you think. <laughs> I know, he was with Billy. He, huh? he was, he, I don't know, CJ, I don't know if you realize this. Fred is one of the people who got, um, you know, Billy all fired up about philosophy. He was who drew, well, you know, drug him. Billy to DE, me and my other buddy, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I've heard him tell that story, but I never knew that it was you. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah we used to practice together, which was a whole other 8 million stories. We didn't need to get in that here. However, uh, you know, it's like what you said, man. You know, the guards changed. And, and I mean, I'm 55, but we, we feel so young that we don't look at ourselves as people. But people look at us as the old people. I mean, not really. I don't think we look old, but, you know, but you look at the kids coming out of school and they look at us like we looked at them and it doesn't seem, it seems weird. Yeah. You know what? Old is older now, right? Because yeah. it, it used to be that I thought 27 was old. And then there was a point when I thought 37 was old. And, and now I think, well, 77 is pretty young. Yeah. Pretty active. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be there in a few years. Because <laughs> yeah. it's coming, right? So I, I got to keep pushing old age further away. But <laughs> I will tell you, you're, the guard has changed. Yes. And, and I think it's so important for anyone, whoever's listening right now, whoever's watching along with us, it is so important to get involved because the only way you change the conversation is by showing up. Yep. You don't like what's going on in your state? Show up. You don't like what's going on in your school? Either show up or send your students to a school that you do support. 
right? If the time is now, we have got to start putting our money where our mouth is. And, and that means you've got buying power, use it to influence the outcome that you want. Yeah, Whether that's exactly. with your schools or with your community businesses or with the, the technique seminars that you go to or the, the philosophy seminars, that put your money where your mouth is and show up where it counts and don't support the organizations and the groups and the businesses that are doing things that are hurting this profession, mm-hmm. period. It's that yeah, simple. Exactly. Well, hey, thanks for being a great leader. So uh, any final words or as we wrap this up, like, I will, I will tell you one more thing because I think, uh, I think this is the thing that I'm most excited about and, and, and most proud about right now. We've had, I've had so many people that have been asking me to help them out and, and, and help them become better speakers and help them become better communicators and, and help them really learn how to deliver a good rock solid message in their community. And, uh, and for years I kept saying, no, oh, there's so many other people out there to do it. Let them do it. Let them do it. But you know what? That's, that's not living with my true congruency, right? If I'm, if I'm sitting here saying, if it is to be, it's up to me. If, if you, you know, you got to take personal responsibility. So we just are launching um, brandingyourcommunication.com, which is this really cool idea with a, with a couple of women that I'm partnering with where we're going to different cities around the world. We've got a bunch of cities already booked and, and people already lined up. And we're training docs and their staff how to have a great, solid communication uh, video, public talk, talks in their office, really how to do it the right way so that they're delivering the right message. It's something we've done through Educated Pregnancy, but now we're taking it out of just the pregnancy realm. And we're teaching docs around the world how to really communicate this message with chiropractic. And it's, it's phenomenal. We're recording them. We're giving them videos that are already done of themselves. So it's, it's fun stuff because it's not stepping on anybody else's toes. I know there's great coaches out there, and we, we work well with everybody but it's really just teaching people how to be a better communicator. And that's, that's something that this profession needs. What's the, what, what's the website again? It's brandingyourcommunication.com. Okay. Nice. Check it out. So and, excited. And, and what's the best way that somebody could get a hold of you if they have questions about, or if they wanted to have you maybe come out and speak or advise you or. I would say the, the best way is to get in touch with my team, and that's through Educated Pregnancy. And the best email address is dr.kathy at educatedpregnancy.com. And I'm sure we can put a link, but it's dr.kathy at educatedpregnancy.com. That'll go right to my team. If you want to get me scheduled for talks, you know, I, I do book out pretty far in advance. I am booked through 2017, but... You know, there's always ways that we can fit your, your group, your organization in or get another speaker over there that can help share the message. Awesome. Nice. Right on. Any last words, Joe? No, no. It was just great to connect with you again. And, uh, you know, because we've known each other for years. So this was a uh, fun uh, podcast for me, for sure. Really? Just sit back listening, not even having to say anything. Because I, I lived a lot of this with you. So it was great. <laughs> exactly. Well, and I think, you know, the... I think the impression that people would get is that, you know, you um, it's almost like ignorance is bliss. You know, you had a purpose. You didn't know you couldn't do it. It wasn't even an option. It's not thinking about it. It's really what it is, Kathy, I think, is just living from your heart. You know what I mean? You feel the purpose in your heart and you follow your heart and your heart gives you courage and you don't let your mind get in the way. And your spirit guides you. Where your spirit guides you, you followed it. And you are a faith. You're, you are, you were, and you are, and always will be a faithful servant. And that's really it. And uh, you do what it takes. Because, you know, I have the same thing, so I'll speak for you as well. The fear of not doing it is far greater than anything you have to go through yep. to do it. That's, I think that's, you know, where you get your courage. Not you, but anybody. It's like, man you get this vision of what you're supposed to do. Like you say, you may put it off, put it off, put it off. And then you hit that point where it's like, I, ha- I can't not do it anymore. Right. Right. Because what would my life be like if I get to the end of it and I look back at all the things I didn't do? I don't want to live in regret. No, no way. That's way yeah. too scary. Yeah. That's way too scary. So that's awesome. You know, it's been a great pleasure. I, I, I personally haven't interacted with you much, but it's great to learn about you, get to know you, and uh, build a relationship. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, absolutely. And I look forward to hearing some stories from you about Billy and DE. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. I think we'll hear those at Cal Gym next year, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. 
We're yeah. rubbing it. We're rubbing it. Really it. Doc. I mean, come on. How yep. cool is that? I think everybody should know that. And you didn't even know it. That's the best part. Yep. Yeah, everybody should know you do spinal correction, man. The application has to match, match the principle. Right. You know what I mean? I think we're missing that in the profession. Of course, that's what we're all about. So. And I love that about you guys because you're absolutely putting the message out there and making sure that people understand that this is about changing lives. Yeah. Really Permanently. Permanently. Cool. Well, thanks tons. Uh, hang on a quick sec. And uh, we'll see. Well, I don't know. Our next podcast coming up soon. We'll have a surprise Probably. guest. Not sure when that is because we don't even know who it is yet. That's why it's a big surprise, but it's coming up soon. I know that. Yep. All right, cool. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Right. Appreciate you guys. All right.